Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and this is an unofficial part two of the previous video on the comm and the nav radios. So I didn't get a chance to get the flight in on the last video so we are going to do that today. And if you remember we were going to make a little flight from Benton Field where we are here we were going to fly up and around here where in Reading there's a little bridge called the Sundial Bridge. That's a local landmark and they use that at the tower as a reference point. So we're going to fly up to this area, the Sundial Bridge, and then we will contact the tower here at Reading, K-R-D-D, and let them know that we want to come in and land and we will go through the radio process here. We'll use the VOR and we'll use the ILS for an instrument landing. Now this is by no means a realistic flight at all. This is just to demonstrate how the radios work and how you can communicate with the tower. All right, to speed things up, I've done the pre-flight and done all that stuff to get ready to go and we're ready to take off on runway 33 here at Benton Field. And you remember we set up all the radios in the last video. So we have our comm radio set here for Benton Field. We have our standby set for the Reading Tower. We have our nav radio set for the RDD VOR. And we have our COM2 radio set for the ATIS at Reading. So let's get going. And here we go. Full throttle. I was trying to keep it on the center line. Remember our rotation speed in the Cessna is 55 knots. So right about there, we pull back on the yoke and we have liftoff. And we're going to fly out on this heading until we get over the river. That's a noise abatement thing here at Benton Field. And I'm going to trim for around 80 knots. I want to get up fast just in case there's an engine failure or I uh, might have a little more time to find a place to set down. Okay, so we're coming up, and there's the river right over here. So we cross the river, and then we're going to make a right turn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that right turn, and then I'm going to pause and explain the rest of this, because things happen really fast, and I probably can't fly and be talking at the same time. So we're over the river. We're going to start making our turn, and we're going to head over to the Sundial Bridge, which I'm going to point out to you in just a second, which is right over here. So there, right around in here, is the Sundial Bridge. So I'm going to pause right here. Okay, so we communicated with Benton Field on the 122.8 frequency and now we want to switch over to 119.8 that'll be the Reading Tower um, we also want to check the ATIS so the reason I froze this is because this is just too much to do for me to explain and try to get all this done without really messing up so we got our tower frequency set and now what we're going to do is listen to the ATIS so we click on the COM2 button. Yeah. Reading Muni Information Sierra. 1900 Zulu weather. Wind calm. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 14. Dew point minus 23. Altimeter 2992. Arriving runway 34. Departing runway 34. Advise on initial contact you have Sierra. So we have Information Sierra. That's information we need to know. They're going to ask us if we have that if we don't tell them. So Information Sierra. And we're landing on runway 34. And that's all we're going to use for this tutorial. So we can turn off COM2. Go back to COM1. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get over the Sundial Bridge. And we're going to give them a call. So here we go. And the call will go something like this. 
Reading Tower, Cessna 84 Delta Lima over Sundial Bridge at 2000 inbound with Sierra to land. And the tower is going to reply something like 84 Delta Lima, continue inbound, report uh, downwind for one way 34. And I'll repeat that back downwind one way 34. So we have our instructions. We know what the tower wants us to do. Now I want to show you the nav radio bit here. So we have our radio set for 108.4. That's the Reading VOR. And this is our VOR indicator. And we have this little deviation needle here. And that tells us that to fly to Reading on a course of 120, we need to move to the right a little bit. So if you want to find out how to get to a place, to a... Um, particular VOR, you rotate this knob here. And the way that works, I'm going to have to unpause, so bear with me as we hit in. Okay, as I rotate this dial, you'll see the deviation needle moves back and forth. So what we want to do is rotate that until it gets right in the middle. And now you can see if we fly a course of, looks like 128, we will fly directly to the Reading VOR. Now this is flying to the VOR, not necessarily the airport. But in this case, the VOR is right on the airport property, so we're in good shape. So we've been instructed to continue in and enter a left downwind and report midfield. So we are going to continue in. Now, for this ridiculous little flight that I've come up with, um, we want to tune our nav radio to the ILS frequency here so we can do an instrument approach. So now we're going to switch from 1084. We can see the airport. We didn't need to do this navigation bit at all. So we're going to switch over to 1087. Now we're set up for the ILS. Now, one of the things we looked at well, one of the things I looked at before coming over here was the pattern altitude for Reading, and that's 1,500. So when we get to 1,500, we are going to level off here and enter the pattern altitude. And we continue in. Notice our DME is telling us we are 1.3 miles from the VOR. Now that includes altitude. So if we were at 5,000 feet altitude, when we flew right over the top of it, it would indicate one mile. Just a little heads up there. All right, so we're getting within three quarters of a mile, half a mile of the airport. We're going to do the downwind thing. And normally they ask us to report when we are midfield. So as soon as we get flying uh, downwind and close to midfield, we will let the tower know exactly where they are. Now they're watching us on radar and they're expecting us to be talking here too pretty quick. So we're going to keep going. Now we're 1.3 miles now from the VOR and I think we can see it. Eh, it's not going to show up. It's right over in here somewhere. But you know what? We're close to midfield, so we're going to make a call now. Reading Tower, Cessna 4 Delta Lima, a beam tower, downwind, 3-4. So that's just another way of saying we're in midfield, right? A beam, a tower. I had to add something to it. So right there is the VOR, that little indicator there. Now he's going to say, 4 Delta Lima, clear to land, runway 3-4. And I'm going to repeat back, clear to land, runway 34. Now, he would have most likely said that as soon as I reported midfield. Or he might have said, you're number two behind a certain airplane. Um, there's all kinds of things that could happen there. But let's put on the full carb heat. We're going to slow down. And now we're going to get ready for our ILS approach. And to do that, tell you what, I'm going to extend this downwind instead of doing it right there. So we have a little more time to see how that works. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the weather change dramatically here. So we're going to have a miracle storm strike the Reading area. 
and we are going to end up with a little or no visibility on say a base turn or on the final and we're going to show you how to use the ILS okay all right before I panic here because we have lost all visibility we ran into this horrific storm here I wanted to explain to you about the nav radio buttons here remember I mentioned that we click on these buttons and we will hear a Morse code so we are tuned to the ILS at Reading KRDD and let's just take a look remember the localizer 108.7 and it had this Morse code dot 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 dash dot dash dot dot dash dot dot we want to hear that when we tune the radio so let's take a listen all right listen closely So that's all there is to it. That's how you will know you are on the right channel for your ILS approach or for any VOR you want to navigate to. Now naturally here we're in an emergency situation. We're probably not going to take the time to pull out the approach plate and look up the code. But maybe in real life you'll have your approach plate with you and you'll have that Morris code going as soon as you turn your radio so you know you're in good shape. So with that little interruption let's continue with our emergency situation. All right we have lost visibility. What are we going to do? We have to rely on our instruments so we're going to pay close attention to our horizontal situation indicator here and remember that's the horizon. These are our wings so we want to be in level flight. We want to drop down to that glide slope and we're looking pretty good on the localizer. We just want to get to the left a little bit. Uh, winds are buffeting me all over the place here. Nasty storm we've got here. I don't know what happened. It's amazing that we're even alive. So let's just keep this thing going right on this heading and see if we can get down to that glide slope. That would be quite nice. Don't want to rush things. Don't want to be working too quickly. Seems to want to go to the left quite a bit here. So now we're looking good in the glide slope. We're catching up on it. Uh, and we're coming back on course. So a little lower on the glide slope. There we go. Let's keep our heading right here. Glide slope. So the closer you get, the more sensitive the meter is too. So don't get too panicky. Um, the closer you get to the VOR, the, a lot more activity you will see here and we're looking pretty good we're just hoping that we can get this on the grand air and there's the runway wow this is great we are happy campers we got through this storm and we were able to land we didn't get to the place where we had to go around because we couldn't see the runway oh we are so fortunate so that's how you use the ILS system you have the glide slope and the localizer. We don't care about the glide slope now because we want to put this little puppy down here right on the numbers and we don't care. We know we're going to make the runway and we want to use every bit of this little runway we can so we're just going to put this thing right there on the numbers. And that's what we like to do. Okay. And now we're just going to raise that nose, keep that nose up, keep that nose up and settle down nice and soft and bring the nose down. Oh, the stall warning came on. It doesn't get any better than that. So there you have it. An ILS landing. Well, this little flight from Benton to Reading is a normal training flight used by many instructors to get students used to talking with a controller. And guess what? We will be flying here again in future videos. And I'm going to use some actual recordings of radio calls that I made during a few of my flights uh, to Reading Muni. So you can hear the real deal here and you can learn from my mistakes. So that's it for this video on the introduction to COM and NAV radios. I know I left out a few things to keep it simple. I didn't want to get you overloaded with too much information. 
I didn't get into the transponder and its use or the ADF automatic direction finder which is most likely not going to be covered in this series there's just not enough stations in x-plane and it's really old navigation tool but if there was something you think I should have mentioned uh, please Leave me a friendly comment or send me a message and I'll see if I can address your concern in another video. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. If you like this, please click the like button. If you'd like to leave me a comment, I would love that. I reply to all my comments. So thank you again for watching and God bless.